In this video, I'm going to parry the absolute hardest combos from every single main boss in Sekiro. And if you find parrying difficult, you're going to struggle a lot less by the end of this video. Now Lady Butterfly has a juicy combo in phase 2, but throughout the whole fight she rinses and repeats these 2 or 3 hit combos. But if you use rhythm, it's a simple 1-2 pause 1 rhythm combo, and then the next one is a simple 1-2-3 combo. Using rhythm, every combo in Sekiro is a lot easier. This is the hardest combo Lady Butterfly does, and it's actually a lot easier than it looks. So here's her hardest combo visualised with rhythm. Going in some form of natural order for the main bosses, we now have Gyobu. He's probably about 70% more about timing and 30% rhythm. This is because he does a lot of single powerful hit moves that require timing. However, he does still have a few combos that can be parried, like this 3 hit charge. But his main move is probably this 3 hit combo, and parrying it is definitely worth it because it leaves him vulnerable. The rhythm to parry it is a simple 1-2 pause 1 sequence. One of his harder parries in phase 2 is his hook, but if you get the timing right, it's a very simple 1-2-3 rhythm. Next up is Genichiro Ashina, who has arguably the hardest combo to parry in the whole game. You might think it's easy, but I'll show you why you're wrong. When you play without Kuro's charm, likely in New Game Plus, you'll have this Japanese symbol next to your HP. This means that when you block, you'll lose chip damage on your health. Now when parrying Genichiro's flurry combo, most people don't realise that they're actually blocking the 7th or 8th hit as indicated by me losing HP. The next clip will show you what the rhythm visually and by sound should be, but isn't. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on this, on what your hardest move was to parry. But in reality, although it's a 9 hit combo, there's only 8 deflect inputs that you have to actually press, and even then, it is so hard to get right consistently. But this is the rhythm that's worked for me for the frustrating 2 out of 100 times that I do actually get it. Simply put, one deflect input will parry the 7 and 8th hit together, but it has to be a parry that's better than perfect. If you think it's easy, come back after you've tried it without Kuro's charm. However, the best way to get around this that still requires a lot of skill and rhythm is by using the Umbrella. The Umbrella will parry the 6th, 7th and 8th hit with only just two button inputs of R2 and L1, giving you just about enough time to parry everything before and after it, as long as you use this rhythm. His Tomoe phase is exactly the same. This time I'll show what the rhythm looks and sounds like even though it's only two umbrella inputs that deflect three hits. Being the skill check boss that Kenichiro is, he still has other tough little combos that are very hard to parry. This arrow attack is similarly inconsistent like the big flurry combo. It requires a good timing and rhythm of 1, 2, 3, 1. It's definitely doable, but again, if you skillfully use the umbrella at the perfect time, it's just a 1, 2, pause, 1 input with the umbrella and standard parry. The final version of Genichiro is Inner Genichiro. You fight him in a gauntlet challenge after completing the game and he has all the same combos plus one big new trick up his sleeve. They're two individual combos, but he generally likes to merge them together and makes it look like this. But keeping the rhythm in mind, it's a quick 1-2 pause 1 for the first combo and a more spaced out 1-2 pause 1 for the Sakura dance combo. Next up, I'll be parrying the Guardian Ape's toughest combos, and as crazy and random as he feels, he also has some rhythm to his game. He has this 4 hit combo with a very slow rhythm sequence of 1-1-2-1, one, 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 but requires more emphasis on timing because of how slow this one is. He also has two mental 5 hit combos in phase 1, both of which can be parried easily with rhythm. He has a rhythm of a normal 1-2, pause, a quick 1-2, small pause, 1. Parrying the hard combos are actually easier at times. The more difficult parts can be parrying the single attacks where quick reactions are needed. His second hardest combo can be parried with a normal 1-2, pause, normal 1-2, bigger pause, 1. And then phase 2's hardest combos have two variations. First is a 1-2, pause, 1 rhythm which staggers him nicely. This allows you to pull the worm out of his neck with a spear for big posture damage. But for the second variation, he takes a lot longer to attack after the first hit. This tells you that the more aggressive combo is coming. Once you notice this combo, this is the rhythm to keep in your head to parry this beastie move. The Headless Ape version you find later has pretty much the same move, but he does take the aggressive combo one step further with a little 1-2 slash at the beginning. However, after that, the rhythm is exactly the same. 
One of the best parrying fights in the whole game that's full of rhythm comes in the form of the Corrupted and True Corrupted Monk. They both have this 5 hit combo and although it seems like a simple 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rhythm, it's actually a 1, 2, tiny pause, 1, 2, 3. If you try to parry as a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you often get hit on the third attack. The first phase is full of easy rhythm attacks that honestly I could parry all day. In fact, I actually parry the True Monk 86 times without getting hit in a parry only fight if you want to check that out. But although this looks never ending, the main part of this move is technically a 6 hit combo, but because I keep parrying the thrust instead of a Mikiri counter, she keeps looping her attacks. So you want to use the rhythm of 5 in a row parries, pause and then 1. It's rare you see this move, but in phase 3, she might change her 6 hit combo to a slightly faster and more harder one, but the way she swings her body makes it obvious she's going to do it. So with a slow 1-2, pause, quick 1-2, then pause and 1, this rhythm makes a tricky combo quite easy. Now going back a step from True Monk, we come to Great Shinobi Owl. I was trying to find his biggest and hardest combos, but what I found was, he has so many single hit and two hit combos that make him so hard. Like when he throws a single shuriken, or kicks you, it's a quick 1-2 parry. But he does still have some combos. This one is a 1-2 pause 1. However, sometimes he'll change it into a 1-2 pause quick 1-2. What makes Owl difficult is that he merges single attacks with two hit combos, so you have to get yourself familiar with these moves to parry all of them together. And if you fight him aggressively, he ends up doing this shoulder barge move which is a quick 1-2 parry followed by firecrackers. After this 1-2 parry is the perfect time to dodge and counter from behind him. And in the next versions of Owl Father, you'll see how these same moves evolve into bigger and harder combos to parry. Now if you fight Owl Father not long after the first version, you should be more familiar with the moves. They're pretty much the same single and two hit combos, just with a couple of extra straightforward two hit combos. However, this is where his combos evolve and get harder. He puts a regular two hit combo and his two hit shoulder barge combo together to make it a nice four hit combo. But if you see it coming, it's a one, two, pause, quick one, two, rhythm for the parry. But what's crazy is this combo gets even harder when you fight his final version, Inner Father. As you can see, Inner Father evolves this combo to its final and hardest version, and it requires careful attention to catch this rhythm of 1, 1, 2, 1, pause, 1, 2. Inner Father has a huge command list of moves, everything that we've already seen from the Divine Owl and Owl Father fights, including their single hits, 2 and 3 hit combos, and the evolved version of some of the bigger combos. But Inner Father still takes things up a notch to make sure your parry skills are near perfect. He has two new two hit combos, though both are relatively easy to parry. A normal 1-2 parry, and a quick 1-2 parry when he vanishes. But the vanishing one feels like it can be on loop almost forever. And to top things off, he has two new unique and difficult to time combos in his final phase. I put this as a 1-2-3 for the rhythm, but the timing gets progressively faster after each parry. At the start of this combo, he vanishes and runs at you, telling you it's this 3 hit combo, but if he vanishes and doesn't run at you, then it's going to be the new 5 hit combo instead. Reacting quickly to know which combo is coming is the hardest part, because you need to know which combo is coming to time the first parry. Once you time the first parry perfectly, the rest is simply down to rhythm. So this one's the 5 hit combo, it's a quick 1-2, pause, slower 1-2, longer pause, and then 1. So where the first combo had progressively quicker parries and shorter pauses, the 5 hit combo was the opposite, it had regressive, slower parries and longer pauses. Next up is the Divine Dragon. There's not really any combos to parry for most of this really cool battle, but towards the end of the fight, it sends these beams of wind that can all be parried except for the perilous ones that come after the red sign. There's two combos and the first one is very straightforward with a 1-2-3-4 rhythm. The second combo is definitely harder because of the timing that's needed for the first hit, as well as jumping to avoid the unparryable attacks. When looking for bosses hardest combos to parry, Demon of Hatred definitely doesn't come to mind. Where most bosses let you parry as your main mechanic, this guy is just your typical big beast, souls-like boss. And it's easier if you fight him without the Sekiro way of parrying. So the hardest thing to parry here I found were his few different foot stomps and his headbutt. There's also one where he tries a flaming punch which can be parried with the Suzaku shield to parry and avoid taking flame damage. Rather than rhythm, this guy just required more timing for the few parries that you might actually do. Now I know the game's years old, but if you haven't completed the sure ending yet, you might want to skip about a minute to the next boss to avoid this spoiler. Emma the Gentle Blade has a juicy combo that requires both timing and rhythm, but even without her big combo, it's a great sword duel and a really fun fight to parry. Here she does a quick 1-2, pause 1, rhythm combo, followed by Mikiri counter. 
and she also has the lightning fast Ashina cross move. But the difference between her version and Ishin's and the Ashina elite mini bosses is that with those guys, the signal to double tap parry for two deflects is as soon as you see their sword hilt flash, whereas Emma changes things up. After you see her sword hilt flash, you have to wait a second and then double tap parry. Definitely have to stay on your toes here. But the hardest combo she does is this 5 hit combo when she steps back. But using the 1, 1, 2, 3, 1 rhythm makes this parry doable as long as you get the timing right on the second hit. Coming straight after the last fight, Ishin Ashina, and he, like Anichiro, has one of the hardest combos in the game to parry, but it's unbelievably satisfying to pull it off. But he also has this 1-2 pause 1 rhythm combo which he does a lot, as well as his own Ashina cross, which can be parried as long as you double tap deflect as soon as you see his sword flash. But he also mixes in a few difficult single hit attacks that require timing more than rhythm. Now one of the craziest combos in the whole game is Ishin's One Mind. The rhythm is a quick 1-2, then a 2 second pause, 1 quick pause, 1-2-3-4-1. But it's 100% consistently parryable with this technique and rhythm. But it will not work unless you do this one broken trick. After this third parry, you have to dash forward and keep hold of forward and then spam parry to deflect all 4 hits of this One Mind. Don't ask me why it works, it just does. Now it's not always about making a hard game even harder for yourself. An alternative easier but still skillful way to parry this is by using the umbrella. Skip the first two hits because you're unlikely to be close anyway, then the hardest part is timing this first parry, then after a small pause, use both deflect inputs with the umbrella to parry all four of the one mind hits. This will give you just enough time to come out to parry the final hit with your sword. Next we have the Glock Saint Ishin who has a ridiculous amount of moves to parry, his rapid fire Glock, his lance, his sword and the 3-6 hit combos that he does, as well as a few singular powerful hits. This is the ultimate rhythm fight and the quicker you learn these sequences the easier the fight is and the more fun you'll have. I have perfected this and the inner Ishin fight, no damage while parrying everything and you can watch them on the channel if you want. Now getting into all the difficult parries, like old man Ishin, you can double tap deflect when you see the flash to parry his Ashina cross. Now he has multiple 3 hit combos that you have to look out for. This one has a sequence of 1, 2, pause, 1. And this one where he's running like an anime character has a sequence of 1, 2, 3. Memorizing so many different variations of these 3 hit combos is what makes him so hard. In phase 2 he has this 1, 2, pause, 1 lance combo which takes things up a notch. But it does require some timing and again it's not the only combo he does. This is where he brings out his huge 7 hit combo. But once you know the timing and the rhythm, you can't unlearn it. It's a combo combo that's parried in pairs. It starts with a quick 1-2, then a pause, then a slower 1-2, and the same pause, then an even more slightly slower 1-2, and then a big pause 1. After a bit of practice it becomes muscle memory, and I can no longer call this combo hard anymore. But like Ganichiro's flurry or his arrows, parrying Ishin's Glock is also a little inconsistent, unless you know the trick on how to parry it with this rhythm. It looks like a simple 1-2-3-4 by the sound and the visuals, but it's actually a 1-2 pause 1. After you hear the third parry sound, that's when you want to press deflect for the final hit. 3 inputs that deflect 4 hits, but if it's too fast, you can skillfully use the umbrella again to parry these rapid attacks instead. Frame and sound wise, if you time it perfectly, you can see that the umbrella deflects all 4 shots. You just need to parry the single hit before and after the Glock. But input wise, this clip will show that you only need to import both deflects with the umbrella to parry all 4 hits. But like Kanichiro and Owl, Sword Saint Ishin also has a final version known as Inner Ishin from the Gauntlet Challenge. But sadly for me he doesn't really get much harder, probably because they knew Ishin already has a ridiculous amount of moves to memorise. That said, here are his additional hardest moves to parry. A 3 hit combo that normal Ishin does, but with an additional 4th hit that comes really fast at the end. The rhythm is 1-2, one, pause, 1-1, one, one. but it requires Spider-Man like reflexes because he doesn't always do that 4th hit. The other new move Inner Ishin has is this 2 hit combo, but all you have to do is jump in the air and parry, wait 1 second and then parry again. I use the umbrella for a nice counter attack. Now as a general rule for combos, even if you miss the timing and get hit, if you know the general rhythm, you can adjust your timing for the next hit and join the rhythm to parry the rest. But that's pretty much all the hardest combos from every main boss in Sekiro. And it's also kind of a rhythm guide video on how to parry as well. I honestly don't know if this was an interesting video or not. Sekiro veterans might enjoy the watch, and noobs might learn a lot. I just enjoy Sekiro and parrying, and I always wanted to make a video on it. So if you enjoyed this video, or found it helpful, leave a like, sub for more, and leave a comment what combo you struggle to parry the most. 